If you're sourcing from China, or you want to start a lucrative business selling products from China either online or offline, stay tuned. In this video, we'll be giving you some useful tips on how to pay your suppliers in China and make sure you're as safe as possible, because a lot of people know that sourcing from China has many risks attached to it. Coming up. Welcome to Global Trade Explained, a series of videos dedicated to providing useful information about importing and exporting goods internationally. When sourcing products from China, you need to make sure you take all precautions to avoid any problems or financial losses later, and that includes paying for your goods the right way. First of all, before we go into any further details, a big piece of advice we want to give everybody is never pay any of your suppliers through Western Union, cryptocurrency, or any other shady payment methods where you're not covered. If you're doing wire transfer, never ever send any money to any personal account. Always make sure you pay to a company account and that the company name matches the name of your supplier. This is very much common sense, but to this day, we still see many people getting ripped off by not following this simple rule. So don't do this under any circumstances unless you want to risk never seeing the goods you've ordered or your money ever again. With that out of the way, we'll talk about how payments for goods work when sourcing from China and in international trade in general. Stick around till the end because besides talking about payment terms, we'll also be talking about payment methods. Wherever you are, China might be half a world away from you, so obviously you're sourcing goods from China in bulk and wholesale volumes. This means that in most cases, you're not buying items that your supplier physically has in stock, especially if you're ordering customized products. Most Chinese suppliers do not hold products in inventory, as the market is so diverse that each customer has their own preferences, so stockpiling products wouldn't be efficient. Since China is so far away, your suppliers don't know you, and you don't know them so payment terms must be set to overcome trust issues on both sides. So because you're not buying products that are already in stock, your supplier might ask you to pay a deposit to cover at least part of the material cost. This is very normal, because if you change your mind and decide to bail out, they'd be stuck with a bunch of products that would probably be very hard for them to sell on their own, because they're personalized with your logo or are designed for a very specific purpose. To start manufacturing, usually most Chinese suppliers will ask for an upfront deposit of 30%, which is fair. Sometimes they may ask for a higher deposit, and in this case, try to negotiate your deposit as low as possible to minimize your risks. A higher deposit for highly customized or unsellable products is understandable in some cases. For example, if you own a restaurant and you order some takeout boxes customized with your own logo on them, those boxes can't be sold to anyone else. But if you're ordering some unbranded apparel items, if you don't want them, you lose your deposit and it's not too big of a deal. However, if the deposit your supplier asks for seems unreasonably high, beware, you may be dealing with a dodgy supplier. After production is finished, you're expected to pay the remaining balance of 70% or whatever you've agreed upon before the products are shipped. We know what you'll say. Well, how do I know I won't get swindled if I have to pay before even receiving the stuff? To ensure you get what you paid for, always send a third party on site to check the conformity of your products. This could be either a quality control company, a sourcing agent, or even one of your friends in China if you have any, as long as they have some business insight. All big corporations relying on Chinese products or materials in their supply chain have a purchasing office in China. For many smaller companies, this could cost more than it's worth. As an alternative, having a long-term partnership with a purchasing agent is one of the best things you can do to have a healthy supply chain. A sourcing agent is like an extension of your company in China, representing your interests there. When it comes to payment methods, the most commonly used is bank transfer, aka telegraphic transfer. When bigger sums of money are involved, in order to protect both the buyer's and seller's interests, a letter of credit, or LC, can be used. A letter of credit is issued by the buyer's bank to guarantee to the supplier that if certain conditions are met, like for example the goods reaching a certain port, the payment will be released. However, many Chinese suppliers aren't sophisticated enough to handle payments by LC, so you'll see that almost all of them won't accept this payment method. Suppliers also get charged higher processing fees by their bank for LCs, so for small orders, the processing time and fees aren't worth the hassle. If you're buying smaller quantities of products from Alibaba, make sure you pay through Alibaba's trade assurance. In case of any delays or conformity issues, Alibaba will mediate between you and the supplier and may even give you a refund. For more significant quantities, as always, we still recommend to send a third party to inspect your goods before paying as filing a complaint with Alibaba can be a lengthy and complicated process, and you're not guaranteed 100% to get your money back. Remember, you are not Alibaba's customer. The seller is. So there's more incentive for them to be on the seller's side than yours. Take a look at our video about how Alibaba makes their money to find out more. 
To be covered by trade assurance, you need to make sure you've communicated all the details of the order with the supplier through Alibaba's platform, either through messages on Alibaba or their trade manager app. Otherwise, you are not covered by Alibaba. Trade Assurance offers you several ways to pay, from transferring to a bank account or even paying with a credit card. PayPal is another way to pay for small sample orders or other fees where normal bank transfer fees would be too high. This way, you also get the protection offered by PayPal and also save on TT fees. However, this isn't ideal for bigger payments, as merchants can pay fees as high as 4.5%, not including any currency conversion rates, and the supplier might pass those charges on to you in your pricing. Another way to save on international money transfers, even for higher amounts, is through WISE, formerly known as TransferWISE. It's incredibly fast, and you can pay in your currency from your bank account or credit card, and your receiver can receive your transfer in their local currency in their bank account, sometimes as fast as the next day. We'll leave you a link to WISE in the description down below, and if you register following our referral link, you can transfer up to $600 for free, and we'll also get a small kickback and you can help support our channel. Speaking of supporting our channel, your likes are what motivate us to keep making more of these videos, so go ahead and hit that like button, and you can let us know in the comments below what other topics you'd like to see us feature. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe, that way you'll be in the loop with all the videos we upload. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.